I was in the middle of writing a documentary and a book about the Prophet Joseph Smith. And it was so weighty, and I was so consumed by it, and I was so frantic about getting it right, and I wasn't getting it right, and I could feel that, and I worried about that, and I worried to the point where there was just this stir about me. And I went into Relief Society one day, and I sat down next to Eileen. And she says, how are you today? I wasn't good. <laughs> and I thought, oh, don't know. So I finally said, well, you know, Eileen, I'm going to start buying socks because I will never have time to wash the ones we need, and I will never have time to match them. <laughs> Eileen looked at me, and do you know what she said? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I could have died. I wanted the floor to open and just swallow me up. Here's the stake president's wife airing the family's dirty laundry. <laughs> the whole meeting, I'm sitting there thinking, why did I open my mouth? Why did I not just say, I'm fine? She would have gone on with the conversation and life would have been fine. The next morning, the phone rang. And my husband picked it up. And I could hear him on the other line, Eileen, how are you? And my heart just stopped. <laughs> I thought, oh no. And then there was this pause and he said, well, yeah, that's a great idea. We'd love that. Okay, well, thank you, goodbye. And he hangs up. And I said, was that Eileen Marshawn? And he said, yes, it was. And I said, what did she want? And he looked at me and he said, She's bringing dinner to us tonight. She asked me if that was a good idea, and I said, yes. <laughs> I said, okay, and he said, not only that, she said she'd bring it every night for two weeks. <laughs> they were starving to death. <laughs> well, so of course, then I had to clean the house, because Eileen was coming. <laughs> So she came that night, about six o'clock, I opened the front door and my boys are just standing there, just, they're already drooling. <laughs> and she's standing there holding a tray. And on this tray she's got jello, so she thought about this early in the day. She's got a cake that obviously she did not pick up at the local bakery, she made it. I mean, she's got all this food. And right behind her is her husband. And he's got another tray of food. And I think, well, this is probably what they had in mind. So they come in, they set it down in the kitchen, and she says, well, we'll be seeing you. And she leaves, walks out the door. And my boys, they open the drawer, they get out the knives and the forks, they don't even wait for plates. They're just going to eat right now. And I look at him and I say, wait a minute, we're only going to eat half of this in case she doesn't come back. <laughs> but you know, Eileen did come back. She came back every night for two weeks. I didn't know her well, but after two weeks, Eileen was one of my dearest friends. Why? Because she knew in her heart she had plenty of oil to share. Because she knew in her heart that she could spread light, a brilliant light, in her neighborhood. And I knew in my heart I could receive it.